And here he is, looking grim this morning. That is Pete Hexeth. <laughs> he usually appears with a big <laughs> smile because he's a very positive kind of guy, but not so <laughs> this morning. I think he's reacting to the president's speech last night. Go ahead, Pete, react. Oh, man, Stuart, you're right. I mean, what a long, boring, ultimately very radical speech, and I think that's what has allowed him to do what he's done thus far. You're spot on. I mean, he wants to take us further than socialism. He wants us to be Europe. Yeah. But he's, he's said in the campaign, I'm not a socialist. You know me. I'm the guy from Scranton. You know me from the Senate. This is not who I am. I'm not going to be a radical. And that's in, enabled him to sort of pull the wool over the eyes, or attempt to at least, of the American people as he sort of reads a teleprompter of the most radical speech we've heard in, in, in a generation in that chamber from a president of the United States. I and mean, Bill Clinton famously said, the era of big government is over. This is the era of big government is back. And, you know, you, you mentioned your uh, grandson, Kenneth, which, congratulations, uh, it's awesome. And I, it, it bolsters an analogy I was going to use this morning, Stuart, because when you're a father with your own kids, as, say, Joe Biden was with his peers in the Senate for 40 years, you adhere to those rules. You say, no, we're going to have it this way, and you fight over every inch, and you better eat your meal, and you better do everything, and your principles are stringent. And then I would imagine, Stuart, you'll have to tell me with 10 grandchildren, but I've seen it with my own parents, uh, when you're a grandparent, you sort of sit back and say, well, whatever the kids want, you know, whatever, they'd let them have it. You know, they're, they're, they're the next generation. And that's precisely what's happening here. The radicals in his midst, he doesn't want to spend the time, doesn't want to spend the effort to take on his base. And so it is comrade Cortez, uh, you know, Bernie's a little old to be a grandchild, but you know what I mean? The radical ideas of the youth are winning the day because it's too tiresome for him to fight back. So he lets Ron it's Klain, his chief of staff, you're right. he lets Susan Rice, that's, his domestic policy advisor, and he lets them take the reins and he sits back and watches it happen. But you know what bugs me more than anything, Pete? It, this is popular. Any government which showers the population with bread and circuses, I mean money, you just chuck it out there by the trillion, you are going to be popular because people like what they think is free. And that popularity may push some of the more important parts of this plan beyond Congress, through Congress. And that truly worries me, Pete. Amen. And the radicals there are willing. Trust me, they're wi they want to find a reason to get rid of the filibuster. They're, they're eager to do structural, transformative change. And they are bolstered, Stuart, by, I think, the most dangerous aspect in our body politic and in our culture today, which is the complete takeover of the classroom, uh, which has transformed a generation of youth to believe that there is such a thing as a free lunch, that they're owed this, that America is structurally unjust. And when that's the fertile ground that you send free money into, they say, please give me more of it. And, oh, by the way, defund the police and keep my borders open. It is, it is a danger, dangerous moment because the grandparents are allowing the uh, highly passionate but ill-informed youth to say, I want socialism. And that was the dangerous aspect of what we saw last night. Uh, I fret for our country. Tim Scott did a great job. Republicans need to find a spine and fight back every single inch of this because our country, our republic, is at stake. Pete, that was a very good analogy. Grandparents <laughs> and uh, bringing up kids. That was good. Man, you're sharp. Well, thank and you, I'm sir. glad you ended with a smile, because that's the way we like to see you, lad. Come again soon, <laughs> we, Pete Hexer. Yeah, absolutely. My, yeah, my favorite book is Smiling Through the Cultural Catastrophe. Sometimes you have to smile. You just you got no other recourse. You know what my favorite book is? Or oh, one of them. What? Animal Farm. Animal Farm and or <laughs> we're 1984. <limited. laughs> yeah, we're, we're oh, don't say it. Excess, you're all right. We'll Thanks see you again you, soon. Thanks very much indeed.